What's going on everyone? My name is Impulse and welcome back to Hermitcraft. I, as you can see, I'm dressed and ready for work and I've got my ticket to Scarland. Of course, you know, I of course got the VIP ticket. I kind of kind of work here. So, uh, I got a little distracted, I'll admit, you know, decked out, of course. Hello. Uh, decked out, of course, has been going strong and, and the addiction is strong with that one, even though I've been uh, struggling a little bit with my runs, which can be frustrating. Uh, but... I have totally not been doing my job here in Scarland, and it feels a little bad. So I wanted to come back today and at least do something to earn my keep. And speaking of keep, it looks like I've got paid for the week. And Scar actually stopped by the office. I didn't get a chance to show him around myself, but he popped in and it says he loves the ticket takers and the office, which makes me very happy. I'm glad. I hope he saw the Bob Gurr <laughs> tribute over here. And oh, cool. It looks like he actually made his way upstairs as well to see my living quarters, which is, um, it's a nicer living quarters than I actually have in my Dwarven keep, to be honest, which is crazy. But yeah, I remember we did this drum set. This was super tedious. And I have something in mind related to drumming as well for today. A project to liven up Main Street just a little bit and get a little rhythm involved. Yep, this part of Main Street is definitely a little too quiet. I think we could use a little street performance maybe about right here. That's right, we're gonna do some armor stand magic and redstone it, of course. Similar to kind of what we did at the entrance, we're gonna use some of the redstone mechanics to make our armor stand move, and we are gonna do some animation in Minecraft. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, so this guy's gonna be our drummer, so we're gonna, of course, need to give him some arms. And we don't really need to see the base plate either. We can get him a costume, of course, we will do that soon. And we don't really want him to be affected by gravity. And then we're going to give him his drumstick. So if we give him that, it puts it in his right hand. And we can use the book to actually switch that to the left hand. And then that means we can give him another drumstick. There you go. Now we just need to raise one arm as if it's like about to drum. About there is probably fine. Can we turn it in a little bit? Yeah, that did the trick. All right. I think we'll even raise this one just a bit. Okay, to about there. Actually, this would definitely help if we put the drum itself in place first. All right, we've got our guy a little drum now. Uh, this is kind of reminiscent of like when you see him drumming on buckets in the street. We've got just a tiny little drum for him sitting here. And yeah, the drumsticks actually look kind of massive compared to the size of that drum. But it is what it is. It's going to work out. I just wanted to make sure we could see the animation. We wouldn't be blocking it too much with the drum itself. And I think that works. So now we need to actually give it a little bit of that animation. But I also did manage to find this Corrales head. Uh, Let's not mention the fact that it was killed by Gemini Tay. Because uh, <laughs> I thought that would be a nice facial expression for the drummer itself. And I suppose we should probably put some clothes on it too. Okay, so now what we have to do is get two different poses for this guy. And this is going to be like left hand striking drum. You can see the stick is actually like kind of making contact with the drum. In fact, if we wanted to, we can use the adjustment wand and probably turn that in even more. And I think I'll move him even closer so it's... Kind of looking like it's hitting at least center of that drum. There we go. I'd say that's good enough. So that is pose number one. And what we want to do is actually take this book and copy that because we're going to use redstone to make sure he can get back to this pose when we want him to. Okay, now we need another book and we need to make a second pose. So we'll bring his left arm up and his right arm down. Bring it in to hit the center of the drum and that should do. So we'll take this book and we'll copy that pose. And now we need to put in a little bit of redstone to basically activate that book, then that book, over and over again. Of course, we don't want redstone to be up here, so I'm thinking I might try to sneak down below. It looks like we got some space, and we'll tuck it under, underneath the ground, so you won't even see it, won't hear it, there won't be any noise, anything like that. And then we'll be able to animate this thing. So let's get a redstone out. All right. So down underneath the armor stands, we've got a couple observers facing into each other, which means they're just going to keep activating signals back and forth. And they're activating those books that we copied the poses into, which means if we go up top, we should see a little bit of animation happening. <laughs> yes, there we go. He is absolutely going to town on that drum that is exactly what we want i mean look at that i mean talk about bringing some life to main street however that is one quiet drum i think we're gonna need to add a little sound into the mix aren't we 
So I was thinking about searching the internet for some copyright free drumming that I could use for this. And I decided, you know what, that's kind of dumb. I have my own drums. Why don't I just put a personal touch on this and do the drumming myself? Let's see what we can come up with. I think that'll do. Uh, it is kind of strange just having just the one drum, you know, just having the snare drum. So we had to do some some rudiment stuff. And actually, I'm, I'm a little rusty, to be honest. So not as smooth as uh, I would have liked it to have been. But I'm thinking that maybe over time we add another member and another member and we can add in other drums like the bass drum and the cymbals and some toms and things like that and get a full nice little drum set thing going. That could be kind of cool. And it'll keep things nice and fresh here in Main Street. But for now, let's get this music loaded on one of our custom discs and then we'll put in some redstone just to kind of detect that there's actually people nearby so then the show can start. So I've hidden a little skulk sensor under the ground just about here. That means as we walk up to see what this guy is doing, it should set off our custom audio. And there it goes. We get ourselves a little show. I even had a little crowd cheering noise, you know, to hype him up a little bit. Look at him go. And I didn't put a huge range on it. So as we back up, you can kind of hear it fade out. So you really got to get up and enjoy the show. Who knew Corrales was such a good drummer? <laughs> Woo! Good job. Well, I think I earned my week's pay here in Scarland. This animated drummer on this main street is amazing and the custom audio that goes off when you get in range i think it's gonna put on a nice little show for visitors here in the park i can't wait for scar to come walking by and be surprised by this guy drumming on the side it's gonna be so great to see but i want to show you what i was up to earlier in the week we had a chance to do nine full decked out runs and i did okay i'm learning a lot and hopefully i keep getting better at it but i want to show you some highlights and if you guys are interested in the full all runs you can check those out on my second channel i put a link in the description to a video of all those runs in their entirety if you want to go watch that uh, but before we get into those highlights let's take a quick commercial break by now, most of you probably know that I love competition. So when I'm not competing in MC championships, you can find me on the tracks in Gameloft's Disney Speedstorm, a high-speed, ultimate hero-based combat racing game. The tracks are absolutely stunning, and you may even recognize some iconic Disney and Pixar landmarks along the way. You can customize everything from your character, your cart, and even your power-ups. I mean, just look at all these Disney and Pixar characters they have to choose from. Personally, I can't wait to unlock Soli from Monsters, Inc. After spending three seasons in early access, Disney Speedstorm is now officially launched as a free-to-play title not only on PC, but consoles like PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch with crossplay. You can choose to play solo or even competitively online, or you can create a private track that only you and your friends can join, or even play offline with local free play in split screen mode. I've had a blast unlocking new characters, new vehicle customizations, and so much more. In fact, four new unlockable racers inspired by Disney's animated movie Aladdin were just added to the game with the launch of Disney Speedstorm Season 4, along with new minigame modes and new tracks. So check out the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now if you want to get racing for free today. And thank you Disney Speedstorm for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to some Hermitcraft. Okay, try to be more mindful of like shriekers and stuff going off so I can get an idea of where they're at. Let's actually go in here. There's a Ravager there. He'll come across here though, right? He can make his way across the river? Maybe not. I think I just left him in a bad spot. Okay, we'll try to pay attention. I gotta go off to the right, but that Ravager's there. He's coming. Find some more goodies, hopefully. Yeah, Shrieker always goes off right there. I need to uh, definitely try to sneak across that. Oh. Okay, we got one. 
as I said that, we're going to run across it like crazy just right about now. Because we have to. Okay. At least we don't have to worry about him in here. We're definitely going the long way on this run. Okay. Oh. No! I thought I was far enough away from him. <laughs> okay. Which one? There it is. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can make it out this way. It's going to be tough. Come on. Can't afford to get any hits. That's down. Oh, I made it. Okay. Not hearing any ravagers. Oh, oh I needed that. <laughs> I needed that so bad. Oh, jeez. Whew. All that for a ten fur, but I'll take it. We spent a long time in there exploring. I did, I'm surprised I didn't find more treasure, but I think I need to get more treasure stuff in my deck. That'll definitely help. But at least we spent a long time in there and made our way out. That's what counts. Oh. 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 Jeez. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, Ember Seekers could be good, but I really need Treasure Hunter, I think, to help with keys if we're going to do more medium runs. Uh, let me think about it while I'm pressing the Art of Fake button. Oh, let's see. Let's see. What do I want to do? This is the toughest part. I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go with Treasure Hunter. I think I need to. I think I need to do that. Four coins for a crown. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Good run. Wait. <laughs> Can't even make it through a door. Hello? Yeah, baby! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, look at all the people that made it here before me, though. Can I have a sign? <laughs> Congratulations on defeating the gauntlet. You may now enjoy a piece of victory cake. Along with your deck of cards, you will find a triumphant trophy in honor of your accomplishment. Please hang it in your decked out locker room with pride. Please take a sign from the chest and inscribe your marking on the wall, letting everyone that follows know you were here before them. Now please exit the to your left and to the ultimate victory chamber. I was excited about it. And then we'll just like tick up. As that goes. Okay, cool. Very nice. Ooh, look at this. Special way out, even. Oh. There's no cake. The cake. The cake's a lie. No matter what you do, <laughs> you have to die to that Ravager. Okay, we're out of maps. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you guys something that I've never told anybody before. I uh. I pay zero attention to that map. Just double check, level one. Just make sure. I'm not. Okay. Once so again, he's up there. Uh, let's sneak the berries first and then pull them down. How about you come in this one? Oh, there was a coin there, though. Uh oh. <laughs> he kind of came in pretty hot there. Okay. Oh, he did loop back around. Great. So he's going to come in here. Okay, let's see if we can get a good idea where this is. <sighs> oh, he was coming for me, huh? Uh, I missed that coin. No, I got it. 
Excellent. Sneak. He didn't come. Twelve. Where'd he go? Oh no. Oh no. With the jokes, let's go. Okay, all right, what are we dealing with at the, at the uh, entrance now? Had to sacrifice a little bit of uh, treasure there to try to make it out. Oh, I think that, that caught right behind me. <laughs> that closed right behind me. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. Woo! We made it. We made it. Four more coins. Ah, still not getting a lot of embers, but I'll take it. That door closed right behind me. I barely, That would have been crazy if I got face smashed by that. I will definitely take that W. It wasn't easy. I had to, uh, I had to juke that one Ravager in that room. Oh. Okay, 12. Uh, I'm going to get my artifact. Since that's a new one that I haven't gotten yet, I guess if I already have the artifact, I shouldn't press the button. It's kind of a waste. But yeah, let's go for our let's go for our ember seeker. All right, not bad. We had a few successful runs and I'm starting to build out a little bit more of my deck, which means I can stay in there longer and tackle more maybe medium and hard and, and even deadly runs, hopefully soon in the future. And we'll get even, oh, as we speak, uh, gem one-eyed Willy, that's the drown that's in level two. Ah! <laughs> oh, the hermits are love and decked out and I cannot wait to explore more of the lower levels as we get better at it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna keep practicing, don't you worry. But also I wanted to let you know that I had a session of Blood on the Clock Tower, session number two with a few other hermits that hadn't played before. And it went pretty long. It was a, like 45 minutes after I edited it down. So didn't want to stuff this in a huge video. So it's going to be on my second channel as well. I know I got a lot of stuff on the second channel. But I know not everybody's into such long videos. And maybe not even into social deduction games. As much as I am, I absolutely have fun with them. And Cleo did a fantastic job. So I'm going to lead you over there as well. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to go see how that all went down. It was a super fun time. And like I said, Cleo did an amazing job with bringing that game here on Hermitcraft. So go check that out uh, after this video is over. But that is going to do it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button if you're not subscribed. Make sure you do that before you go. With that said, I'll see you again next time. Have a good one, everyone.